Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Majora's Mask. We left off right here in the Goron Village in front of the Powder Keg Shop, so we have to turn into Hylian Link to jump up, then turn back to Goron Link to do what's in here. As we head in, we can see, hey look, it's one of the giant Gorons, cool. Whoa, did you hear that? What was that? I have no idea. Okay, anyway, I'm the Goron who sells the Powder Keg, the most famous product of the Gorons. Want a Powder Keg? Powder Kegs explode with powerful blasts and are very dangerous. Until I have tested you to see if you can use them properly, I can't let you use any on your own. Will you give it a try? Yeah, let's do it. If you can destroy the boulder that blocks the entrance to the Goron racetrack near here, using the Powder Keg I'm about to give you, then I'll approve you to carry them. Alright, so he drops this powder keg for us. Now, when the powder keg begins taking faster, it's about to explode. Try to blow with the boulder blocking the Goron racetrack entrance without the powder keg exploding on the way, obviously. Okay, so uh, we're going to have to carry this thing, and of course we're going to have to throw it up these little ramps, because you can't walk up them, you got to roll. So, pick it up, throw it. Then, pick it up and throw it. You do have a time limit here, it's sort of marked by the uh, fuse on the powder keg, but as you can see, it's actually pretty long, and it's really not going up that fast, so... Um, again, this is much like the Rock Sirloin in that you can't roll and you can't turn into Hylian Link, so, you know, we're just gonna have to do it the long way. So let's walk back up here using pretty much the same path that we took before with the Rock Sirloin, except this time we're gonna head to the Goron Racetrack. You might not really know where that is, but of course I do, so I'll point it out to you. So let's head on into the next area. It's actually in this little three island area. So let's head on down the bridge, being careful not to fall in the water. You don't want that to happen. Uh, okay. That was weird. I guess he hit a bump or something. I don't know. I did not hit anything there, but okay. <laughs> that was interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we're just about there. Holy crap. Okay, he doesn't drop it whenever you get hit. That's good. Okay, so we're going to make our way around, and instead of going back through there, we're actually going to head up this little ramp on the side. So we have to uh, throw the powder keg up there once again, and grab the thing. It can be kind of hard to get in position to grab it. Then throw it up here, pick it up once again, and throw it up here. As you can see, there is a giant boulder there, and also the baby Goron has somehow managed to make his way out here. So let's pick this thing up. Set it down beside the boulder there, and then if you've got enough time left, you know, you don't really want to sit around waiting forever, you can shoot it with an arrow. It doesn't have to be a fire arrow, but... You did it! Thanks a lot! I'm going right in. I'll be waiting for you, so you have to come see it. Yep, so he's going to run his way on in there, and that is the Goron Racetrack, which, as you can imagine, is another minigame we're going to have to do. But, I'm going to torture you a little bit, and not do it right now, <laughs> um, because there's actually, we want to do that on um, pretty much the first day, really. It's already too late. You don't have to do the race in particular on the first day, but what you use the reward for, like, you know, you really have to start that whole thing on the first day. So, um, what we're going to do is actually head all the way back to uh, the Goron Village again, making sure not to fall off, of course. And we're going to head back to the uh, big Goron that was uh, running the powder keg shop. So let's roll our way over there. Oh, I always bump into that. I think that's the second time in a row I've bumped into that. But yeah, you don't really go too much faster on snow. All right, so turn into Hylian Link. Jump. Turn into Goron Link. And make your way back down here. Oh. It looks like you managed to succeed. Knowing your skills, I feel fine letting you handle powder kegs on your own. It was bad of me to put you through such a dangerous test. I want you to take this as my apology. And to apologize for giving us a powder keg, he gives us a powder keg. So now we can uh, carry those in our inventory. As he said, we can only shoot, we can only carry one at a time. If you shoot them with an arrow, they'll explode as soon as they're hit, so be careful. Yeah, so now we've got a powder keg in our inventory, and that's going to uh, be something that we can get from now on since we've done that, so um, that's pretty good. But now that we have gotten that, actually, um, remember I did say that what we're going to uh, sort of use the reward for the Goron Racetrack for has to be started on the uh, day, on the first day. So uh, we're going to actually soar back to uh, Clocktown real quick. Yeah, there we go, I didn't know if I messed up or not. Um, we're going to soar back to Clocktown in order to... Um, put the rupees back in the bank, and then reset time, and then we'll kind of start that whole little side quest. Um, turns out we're actually going to get a very, very nice upgrade out of it, so um, it's probably a good idea to do it at this point, since it's pretty much as soon as you can. 
but um, the only problem with resetting time is that it also resets the fact that we beat Goat, uh, meaning that the entire Snowhead area is going to still be covered in snow and it won't be springtime, which means that we can't do the whole race thing. So um, we're going to have to actually go back and beat Goat again, but they make that a little bit more convenient, and I'll show you once we get to it. Um, so let's go ahead and just put our rupees back in. I guess I did really need to show this, but oh well. Alright, so let's deposit our rupees. Since we broke 5,000 again, he's gonna give us a blue rupee, just kind of to insult us, I guess. Now it's reset time, and I will meet you actually back in Snowhead Temple so we can be goat again. Awesome. Alright, scratch what I said earlier, I'm actually meeting you back here after we've reset time. As you can see, I filled up my wallet. Um, we're gonna head back into the bomb shop because we're gonna need a powder keg, of course, in order to uh, actually blow up the boulder in front of the racetrack. So this guy doesn't sell them, but there's actually a Goron sitting over here that's kind of cleverly hidden by the camera if you don't think to go over there. Oh, of all places, you're a Goron, so you should be able to carry a powder keg, right? So, won't you buy a powder keg for 50 rupees? So yeah, you spend 50 rupees and he'll give you a powder keg. Of course, being like a consumable item sort of thing, it's going to go away whenever you reset time. Um, come back and see me if you run out, of course. And you can only carry one, which is your max inventory for it. Um, Alright, so now that we've got the powder keg, you're also going to need some rupees, so it's a good idea to... Um, I guess 150 is really all you need to withdraw, but you, you do need rupees, so... Um, Alright, now we're going to go back to Snowhead and we are going to uh, beat Goat one more time. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is actually do a little bit of editing in order to make the process a little bit less painful for you, but still equally painful for me, so <laughs> let's do it. Alright, so once you come back into a temple after beating it, you can see we're back here in Snowhead Temple. We're gonna get a little cutscene. Ye who hold my remains. I guess this is goat speaking. Return to the appointed place to face me. And what's going to happen is he's going to activate this little panel in front of us, which is very convenient because when we step on it, as you can see, we get the option to go straight to the temple's boss. So basically, that's their way of ensuring that you don't have to go through the entire freaking temple again. That would take so long and be very annoying. So you can pretty much just warp straight here, and as you can see, we're about to face Goat again. I'm not going to make you watch this battle again unless something interesting happens. Um, I do need arrows, though, which you can get from the pot right there. I didn't mention that, but there you go. So, uh, I'm going to beat this guy, and then we will meet you in spring. Okay, so it is now springtime in Snowhead, as you can see. Um, doesn't that sound like the, the title of a musical to you or something? Like, springtime in Snowhead, but, oh well, whatever. So, uh, anyway, no, let's not play the drums. Um, let's get back out. We're gonna head back over to the Goron Village area, which is not right there. Um, it is right here. And we're going to use our powder keg this time, instead of that one guy's powder keg, in order to open up the racetrack and, uh, well, let's not get too hasty there. And, uh, let's see, okay, it's around this way, so we can just roll on up. Thankfully, it's a lot faster this time, because you don't have to drag that stupid thing with you. You can just come up to it and get out the powder keg. Set it down. And, of course, this one does have a uh, considerably smaller timer than the other one did, but... Um, still, it's probably faster to just go ahead and shoot it with arrows. So there we go, we explode it. You did it, thanks a lot. I'm going right in, I'll be waiting for you, so you have to come see it. Oh yeah, of course, because we weren't a Goron, so, nice. Um, I think if you're a Goron whenever it explodes, it's like, Oh, you did an awesome job, Darmy, and you know, is um, a lot more personal with you, but... Um, either way, we can head on in, and now we're finally going to take on the Goron racetrack, so, awesome. Look at these two here. Gonna give them a massage. Oh yeah, that feels good. <laughs> and stretching over there, doing some, uh, some arm flails. I don't really know how that's supposed to help. But, oh look at that guy. Got to shake it out. Shake it out. All right. <laughs> okay. So anyway, now that they're doing their various warm ups, we can talk to the kid. Ah, Darmy, I've been waiting for you. See, everyone's restless because they can't wait to enter. You're gonna enter, aren't you? You're gonna enter, aren't you? But yeah, okay, okay. Geez, I'll do it. You have to. I want to show everyone how Darmy races. If your magic power runs low, charge it up with the green jars on the course. And now we are going to do a Goron race. Awesome. So, of course, you know, we're going to be using the rolling ability. So, uh, we got a little countdown. You can kind of get 
a little bit of a uh, false start there if you want. I um, just make sure not to cross the checkered line before it says go. So, you know, obviously that just kind of makes sense. But it seems for whatever reason that these guys are a lot faster than you. As you can see, they're really catching up. So um, they kind of borrow a page from a Super Mario Kart there, I guess, because they would always do that in that game too. But you pretty much just want to keep going around and uh, you can hit these ramps if you want. Um, I guess that didn't really help too much, but uh, so yeah, the guys can get a little bit far ahead of you, but you don't really need to worry about it too much. They will sort of adjust their speed based on where you're at, and they go really f slow through that uh, tree portion, so. All right, now here it's probably a better idea to avoid the ramps, but I uh, figured it'd probably be a good idea to get the uh, magic refill. Now, uh, make your way along this bridge here. That Don't follow that guy. As you can see, he falls into the pit, so that's very misleading there as well. So we're in the lead, which is good. Um, so now we need to uh, try to fend everybody off here. Make your way around the inside, of course, because that's the uh, fastest way to go. Then once you get here, almost always a Goron will try to come up and take your spot. But thankfully it didn't that time, and we won the race. That's really not too hard if you're somewhat decent at rolling, uh, because like I said, they will adjust their speed depending on where you're at, so um, that might take a couple tries, but overall it's not too bad. That was great! I knew you were the fastest Goron Darmy. I was sure you'd get first place. This is from Daddy. It's the prize. Ooh, the prize. That's right, we get a bottle of gold dust, which is a random thing to get, but this is the finest quality available. I want to be just like you. Quick! Yep, awesome. So... All right, we've got our reward from that. We've also picked up, um, that's only our second bottle, but um, we're going to be getting actually quite a few of them uh, relatively soon, in fact, so. All right, now that we've gotten the gold dust, we can actually use that to pick up the aforementioned upgrade that I said um, that we would get before. So, we're going to have to make our way all the way back to the mountain village here. I guess we can use a little bit of magic, but... Um, so now that it's spring, their, uh, their little furnace will, of course, be uh, completely melted. And uh, I did find out that you can use the uh, hot spring water to melt it, but uh, I just figured I didn't really want to waste the money on getting an upgrade that I probably wouldn't even use that much anyway, so... Alright, now we're gonna head in, and since they can uh, go back into business... Ugo, oh! Ugo, Ugo, Ugo! Oh, a customer! Gabora, fetch our customer some coffee, quick-like. Now then, let me take a look at your sword. Hmm... All right, to reforge your sword, it'll cost you 100 rupees. It'll be ready at sunrise. You'll have to let us hold on to your sword till then. Keep in mind that after you use your reforged sword 100 times, it'll lose its edge and it'll be back to its original sharpness. So, would you like your sword reforged for 100 rupees? Now, yeah, let's do it. Thanks for dropping in. Now then, I'm straight off to work. Come back tomorrow morning. Ugo, Ugo, Ugo! All right, so they're going to toss us out, and we no longer have a sword, so the B button is just kind of not there for much. But, as he said, it will be ready tomorrow morning, so we're going to have to uh, use the Song of Double Time in order to uh, make it go by quicker. I mean, I guess you don't have to use the Song of Double Time, but who really wants to sit here for that long, you know? Alright, so we go back in on the second morning, and we can now uh, claim our Reforged Sword. I kept you waiting, but it's done, see? And with that, we get the Razor Sword. The Kokiri Sword has been strengthened and forged into a Razor Sword. This new sharper blade is a cut above the rest. Oh, that's that's nice. Use it up to 100 times without dulling its superior edge. Now keep in mind that after you've used this 100 times, the blade will lose its edge and will return to its original sharpness. Now here's the secret. If you bring me gold dust before the sword loses its edge, I'll be able to make the strongest sword around. Got that? Gold dust. Ugo! 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 All right, so he mentioned gold dust, and thankfully we have it. I guess we can go ahead and check out the razor sword, though. It looks pretty cool, but um, as he said, after 100 uses, it goes back to its original form. I don't really know how it would go back to being the Kokiri sword after it looks so much different, but it looks pretty cool, I gotta admit. But uh, either way, we're not gonna be using it because uh, we're gonna go ahead and just upgrade it to the next level. Hmm. Hey, now that's a mean joke. Your sword's already been reforged into a razor sword. Unless, do you want me to make your sword stronger? To do that, I'll need gold dust. Do you have any? Well, it just so happens that I do. So it wasn't a completely random reward after all. We are actually going to use it for something, of course. So let's hand over the gold dust. Why, if it isn't gold dust, then it's even top quality. Why, even if I use it to reforge your sword, there'll still be some left. Alright, just for you. I'll do this for free, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> okay. Thanks for dropping in. Now then, I'm straight off to work. Come back tomorrow morning. Ugo, Ugo, Ugo! 
All right, so with the Ugos, we get sent out again. And this is why I said you really needed to start it on the first day, because it's going to have to be um, the third day before we can actually claim the final upgrade. And he won't forge at night, so um, it really did need to be the first day. I wasn't just, you know, wasting time or anything like that. Alright, so it's now the final day, and we can claim our upgraded sword. Again. Alright, so with that, we are going to get the Gilded Sword. Newly forged, your sword is better than ever and will never break. There it is. We can't make a sword stronger than that. No matter how many times you use it, it will never lose its edge. Try it. Oh, I used up most of the gold dust. Just a tiny bit was left, so I got rid of it for you. Oh man, I could have sold that or something. Ugo, oh, Ugo, 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 Ugo. All right, so that's the last set of Ugos I'm going to have to do, because we now have the Gilded Sword, which is uh, the best sword that Link can have. So, awesome. Um, looks pretty cool, um, I suppose. The hilt is really cool. I'm actually not that big of a fan of the uh, little, like, gold diamonds on the blade. I don't know. It just looks kind of weird to me, but um, you really don't ever see it from that close. So, you know, when you just swing it like that, it looks pretty cool. Um, also, the good thing is the reach is actually lengthened a little bit, too. So, um, that's definitely helpful either way. But now that we've done that, there's not really too much left we can do, so I'm going to uh, soar back to Clock Town and reset time and do all that good stuff, and uh, this also seems like a good place to end the video. Okay, so next time we are going to uh, take on some more side stuff. There's actually quite a bit that we can do now that we've beaten uh, Snowhead, so uh, we're going to start on that next time. Until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you then.